Hello, Year 6. I'm going to be reading Part 8 of The Boy at the Back of the Class. As soon as I got to the bus stop the next day, I told Josie and Tom and Michael everything my mom had told me about the refugee kids and how the new boy had probably had to get on a boat with no toilets on it so he would run away from bombs and other bad things that the bullies had done in his country. But my dad said refugee kids are dangerous and they lie and steal things, said Josie. Looking confused, he told me to stay away from the new boy and not talk to him because he was probably a criminal. But my mum and dad said we should be extra nice to him. Look, and opening his rucksack, Tom showed us a big bag of sweets. Mum said to give these to him at lunchtime. And she said we had to be nice to him and not ask him too many questions. My mum said the same, said Michael, as we got on the school bus, except she told me to give him a banana. And my dad said refugee kids were running away from the war that's on television all the time. He didn't say anything about bullies. We all looked over at Josie, who was chewing on the ends of her hair and frowning. She didn't say anything, but I knew she was thinking that her dad must have made a mistake. There was no way the new boy could be dangerous or a criminal. Not when he was the same size as us and had just run away from bullies and a real war. Mr Thompson had taught us all about wars last year. It had been a special year of four wars and Mrs Sanders said it was our duty not to forget about them. We learned about red poppies and how they were the most important flower because they grew on soldiers' graves and how about lots of countries had joined up to fight in the very first war. The upper years did an assembly about it and we went on a special day trip to the Tower of London where the Queen keeps her crown because that's where millions of red poppies had been put in its gardens and stuck on its walls. Mr Thompson said we should never forget how many people have died in wars to save us, but I can't remember long numbers, especially the ones that keep going up all the time. But I'll never forget that castle. It looked like it was bleeding. And later on that day, a man who knew all about the first big war gave us an extra special lesson inside the castle. His name was Officer Denny. I remember him because his name rhymed with my uncle Lenny's. Everyone liked him because he was funny and knew everything there was to know about the bombs and uniforms and a sad place called Flanders Field. He picked me and Michael to try and hold up a rucksack that was the same size and weight as a real soldier's rucksack, but it was so big and heavy that we couldn't even lift it off the ground. Remembering Officer Denny's rucksack made me wonder if the new boy had to carry lots of heavy things in his rucksack when he was running away. Maybe that's why he looked so old and rusty. He still didn't have a new one. But that week he had started to wear the school uniform. He must have found the new shirt and jumper itchy because he kept pulling it at the collar whenever he thought no one was looking. That day, the school bus was late and got stuck in so much traffic that the driver let everyone get off early. We had to run half the way and by the time we got to the playground, the bell had started ringing. I was so hot and sweaty and feeling icky when we got into class, so I didn't realise that everyone was quieter than usual. But after a few minutes, I noticed that Pavinda and Dean, who were clever at everything and sat at the front of the class, kept looking over their shoulders. At first, I thought they were looking at me because my face was still red. But then I heard Pavinda say, wonder who she is. I turned around and saw a grown-up sitting in Clarissa's seat. And not just any old grown-up, but one who was talking to the new boy. And the new boy was talking back to her. I poked Josie in the arm and said, look. Josie turned around and whispered, where's Clarissa? We looked around the classroom and then saw that Clarissa was sitting at the end of our row on Felicity and Natasha's table. She looked much happier. Hurry up and settle down, please, said Mrs Khan, as she picked up the register. Before we head to assembly, I want to introduce someone very special to you. But let's make sure you're all here first. After she had finished calling everyone's name, Mrs Khan said, Now, class, I want you to all say good morning to Miss Hemsey, our new class assistant. Miss Hemsey stood up and smiled at everyone. Good morning, Miss Hemsey, we all said. Half the class shouted it out and the other half said it quietly, as if we weren't sure Mrs Khan had given them the right name to say. I shouted it out. I like shouting out new names. It makes them feel more real. 
Miss Hemsey smiled and said, Good morning, everyone. Miss Hemsey will be helping Ahmet with his lessons from now on. If we're lucky, in a few weeks, she'll be helping Ahmet to do a presentation about his hometown and how he feels about being here in London. Everyone turned to stare at Miss Hemsey as she nodded and smiled and sat back down. She looks nice, whispered Josie. I like her scarf. I looked back over my shoulder because I liked the scarf Miss Hemsey was wearing on her head too. It looked like a silver river and it had a diamond pin clipped on one of the sides that looked like a star. She had one of the smiles where the person smiling never shows any teeth but I liked it and her eyes looked like they'd been drawn around with thick black pencil which made them bigger and more interesting. The new boy seemed to like her too. And when she sat back down, she whispered something to him and patted him on the back, which made him nod. I felt happy for him. He had someone to talk to and he didn't have to sit next to Clarissa anymore. It's much nicer to sit next to someone who isn't trying to get away from you all the time and has a diamond pin on her scarf. All that day, the new boy did his lessons at the back of the class and at break times at lunchtime, he went to the seclusion as usual. But maybe because Miss Hemsey was with him, he didn't look at the ground so much and seemed more interested in everything we were doing. I caught him staring at me and Josie twice before lunchtime and three times in the afternoon and I was sure he wanted to be friends with us now.